Good evening and welcome to this Tuesday, September 19th meeting of the Raymore Planning and Zoning Commission. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We'll call a roll and let me remind commission members, please be sure your microphone is lighted and speak into the mic for the record. Uh, Commissioner Anderson. Commissioner Armstrong. Here. Commissioner Bowie. Commissioner Crane. Here. Commissioner Pfizer. Here. Commissioner Meiske. Present. Commissioner Sarsfield. Present. Mayor Turnbow. Here. And Commissioner Faulkner is present. We do have a quorum. We have no personal appearances scheduled this evening. On consent agenda, we're going to move case 17025, replant of Prairie View of the Good Ranch, to the new business section for discussion. So, consent agenda, we have one item acceptance of minutes of our August 15th, 2017 meeting. And unless any of the commissioners have concerns about the minutes, I would entertain either a motion to accept the minutes or accept the consent agenda. As amended. Sorry? Accept the consent agenda with only as the amended. minutes. Ah, thank you, Mr. Zur. I'll move to accept the consent agenda as amended. I'll second. Uh, motion by Mayor Turnbow, second by Commissioner Meiske to accept consent agenda as amended. All those in favor, raise a hand, please. Seven, seven in favor, none opposed, no abstentions. And nothing under old business this evening which takes us into new business and Mr. Cataret, Mr. Grass, I suppose we should probably start with case 17025. Yes, sir. Replat of Prairie View of the Good Ranch and uh, would you like to give the staff report prior to the applicant? Yes, tonight, uh, only if there are any questions of the applicant, we'll be just giving a brief update of the staff report. Uh, however, if the commission has any questions of the applicant, he is present yep. and more than happy to answer those for you all. Okay. Go ahead with staff report, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the applicant, uh, Matt Schlitt, rec rec uh, representing Engineering Solutions, is here this evening to request final plat um, approval or replat of Prairie View of the Good Ranch lots one through 65 and tracks A through E. Um, without going into full detail of the staff report, um, I just want to update the, com the commission on a couple changes that have been made to the recommendation um, of approval as well as the conditions of approval. Um, so if I could, I would like to direct your attention to uh, page number eight of the staff report, which has the staff comments um, on page number eight. If you look at bullet point number 13, it lists uh, four revisions that are required um, and necessary for the final plot prior to its acceptance and recording through Cass County. I'm going to list revisions A through D. Um, in conversations with the applicant, uh, staff, and the water district, um, there's one more item that has come up that is, will be necessary prior to acceptance and approval of this plat, um, and that is going to be revision number E. Um, and in talking with the, with the water district who will be serving this, this development with the water services, um, they require a, a water easement to be located on the property for their facilities that are required to provide water to those homes. Um, and in doing that, we had, we had talked it over with staff and the applicant to, to require to show that easement um, on the plot to avoid any confusion down the road uh, when permits are pulled for these homes and homes are being built. Uh, we'd like to show that water line easement on the property to avoid any confusion, um, like I said, at the times permits are pulled. Um, so that will require the applicant to complete revisions A through E um, in the staff recommendation found on page number nine. Uh, moving forward, if I can direct your attention now to page number nine, uh, there's a couple of changes that have been made to the conditions of approval for this case. Um, we'll start with the first one. The first condition of approval reads, the developer must sign the developer development agreement prior to the first reading of city council. Um, due to our, our, our responsibility of keeping this process moving forward and this project on its timeline, um, we would like to change that to having the developer sign the development agreement prior to the second reading 
um, of, of the city council. Um, there's a couple things that are still hanging in there as far as cost estimates and, and things of that nature for the development agreement before it's finished. Um, however, we'd like to keep moving this application moving forward and just move that development agreement to the second reading of city council. So that's the first change. Uh, the second one reads the applicant must submit a revised plat showing the revisions A through D from the staff comments uh, with the additional comment that I just read from page eight that will just change that condition to uh, revisions A through E uh, in this case. Um, so that is a second change. And the third comes from conversations again with staff, the developer, uh, the property owner in the water district. Um, if you look at the plat map, it shows that a, a water line easement currently exists on the eastern side of Brook Parkway. Um, and for the majority of its, of its length, it follows the alignment of Brook Parkway, but towards the south, it kind of jogs over to the west a little bit um, and crosses over Brook Parkway and underneath uh, three to four lots that are being proposed um, as part of this development. Um, and to avoid, like I said, any, any confusion in the future over, over whose easement that is and where the road's constructed, um, staff has requested that the applicant and developer come to some sort of agreement um, with Water District Number 10, um, acknowledging that the road is currently plotted over their existing easement um, and either reaching an agreement stating that that's okay or deciding whether or not the road needs to be reconstructed or if the water lane needs to be moved. Um, we just want to have that documentation that the Water District acknowledges that they know uh, that that road is constructed over, over their easement. Um, and the, the, I believe the applicant has had discussions with the Water District and is in, in the process of, of reaching that agreement. Um, however, they do not have that this evening. Um, so we've, we requested to make that a condition of approval uh, moving forward. Mm -hmm. That concludes staff report at this time and update on any of the changes. If you all have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer it. Um, and as I mentioned, the applicant is here this evening. So if you have any mm -hmm. questions for him, um, he'd be more than happy to answer right. those as well. Thank you, Mr. Bryce. So commission members, does anybody have any questions for either staff or applicant? And for the record, let me note that Commissioner Anderson is now present. Any questions? No? Okay, well, this case didn't require a public hearing, so um, we can have further discussion or a motion on case 17025, noting the changes from staff just presented. can stay till my bedtime. Mr. Chair? Uh, Mayor Turnbow, you're doing a lot of work this evening. Yeah. <laughs> I would go ahead and uh, make the motion to accept the staff proposed findings of fact and forward case uh, 17025, the Prairie View of the Good Ranch final plat, lots one through 65 and tracks A through E um, for approval and recommendation, or recommendation for approval to the city council and with the uh, revisions uh, to the final plat as stated by staff. Mm -hmm. Works for me. I'll second that. Is that okay? I would simply, you do have the member of the applicant here in the, sta in the room. It might be appropriate just to make sure they are good with regard to those conditions being applied. You can come to the podium or give us a head nod. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Slish. Okay, so motion by Mayor Turnbow, second by Commissioner Pfizer to accept staff proposed findings of fact on case 17025, Prairie View of the Good Ranch, final plat, lots one through 65, tracks A through E, and forward to city council with recommendation of approval subject to the three conditions as revised this evening by staff. Is there any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor, raise a hand, please. Two, three, six, seven, I've got seven in favor. Any opposed? And abstaining would be Commissioner Anderson. And I think I probably know why, but. Sir, your assumption is correct. Okay. Because you weren't here to hear the full case. Thank you. Okay. Good enough. Okay. So 
That takes care of case 17025, thank you. And moves us along to case 17027, the 2018 through 2022 capital improvement program. This case will require a public hearing or does require a public hearing. And I don't know, Mr. Zur, should I just open the public hearing right off? You are the chair, you are welcome to do so. Well, just so I don't forget it later, I'll open the public hearing and invite Mr. Fearborn to come forward to the podium and present the capital improvement program. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, it is a true pleasure to be in front of you again tonight to present the 2018-2022 capital improvement program for the city. As most of you know, I believe only Commissioner Armstrong, were you here last year when I made this presentation? I think you came on afterwards. State statute does require that uh, the capital improvement program for the city be presented to, and as well as city charter, requires that this program be presented to this commission for your approval and recommendation on to the city council. The, the approval of the Planning and Zoning Commission is most appropriate because the number one focus, the number one goal of the CIP is to, as you see in number one for the goals, focus attention on and assist in the implementation of the established community goals through the growth management plan of the city, which of course is a plan which you all are intimately involved with. That being said, and with that set up, and because most of you know the process that is in place, the only change in the CIP process from the staff level is that this year the CIP, the staff CIP committee has made the determination that they are going to meet year round. Uh, get a better feel for those projects as they're evolving, give us a little bit better background, a little bit more time to flesh the projects out, have good staff debate on a year-round basis before we bring them to the city council first and then the, to this commission for your approval. That is the only change in the process. The remainder of the process is in the first few pages of the CIP. I'm sure you've all had the chance to browse that. Uh, if there are any questions I would answer to the process before we actually get into the meat and potatoes that everybody likes to hear, which is the projects themselves. Would you all have any questions on that? Very good. If I could ask you to turn to page 11 mm -hmm. of the CIP, which is the summary page of the projects, and these are listed by the funding source of the project. So if we're using the capital improvement sales tax fund to fund a project, it could go across the board as far as the areas of determination. A transportation project could come out of the capital improvement fund, a water project. In this case, we have two, a transportation fund project and a parks and recreation project are being funded out of the capital improvement sales tax. But with you all's consent, I will simply walk down these projects as you see them on the page with a little brief description. Uh, from the buildings, building and equipment replacement fund, we use this fund primarily to uh, pay for projects, proposed projects that are either updates to existing facilities, uh, expansions of new facilities that are necessary by virtue of our growth. Uh, the projects that are being proposed out of this fund for this year on page 18 uh, is the Public Works Facility Roof Repair. For many, many years, we have in vain attempted to get the leaks off of the roof at the Public Works Facility. Uh, we're not messing around anymore. We're going straight to the heart of it, and we're going to overlay the existing roof with a full roof, and as you see on page 18, it's actually in the center portion of the H of the building. The City Hall front interior repair, it, we, the front patio that is here on the north side of the building uh, appears to be concrete, uh, but it's actually a sieve, 
and for many years it has leaked down into the evidence room for the police department. We have tried a number of ways to fix that. As you walk into the building, you see the unsightly rust that's starting to build up all along the sides and on the metal facade. So we are going to fix that kind of the same way we're fixing the public works building. We're actually going to cover the whole thing and extend the lobby out to the north to the edge of the front brick line of the building. So the lobby will be much larger, uh, have a lot more uses for us. Uh, have a small lounge area in it and there's another section of this where the updates to the interior portion of the lobby will also be included in that. That is on page 20 of this, of this document. The police squad room, downstairs the police squad room is the only area of the police department that has not seen an update since we opened in 2002. It is outdated, the equipment that is in there. Much of it was brought over from the old police department when it was on Washington Street. Uh, it's seeing its age. Uh, when you walk through, our officers will be at an open table uh, entering their reports. They'll have evidence sitting next to them on the table. They need uh, some privacy when they're, when they're doing that rather than the city manager wandering through saying hello to all of them and getting into areas that he doesn't need to be. The, the City Hall LED lighting program and the Public Works LED lighting program. Last year, the building technician for this building, Mr. Darrell Quaddy, began kind of an informal process of changing out the bulbs here in City Hall with LED bulbs. Uh, we have been tracking that usage. Uh, they've already paid for themselves. We were able to, on a trade-in program, turn in the old bulbs. We're doing the same thing with this particular project and completely outfitting both of these buildings with all LED, uh, we estimate an eight to 10 year turnaround on that. The uh, executive conference room chairs, you all don't really have the ability, these are these blue chairs, they're also in the executive conference room. By the end of a longer meeting uh, for the management team or if we have to meet in an executive session with the council, everybody's eyes are at about table level as the chairs slowly sink over the course of an hour. Time to get those changed out. And then of course, as I said before, with the modifications to the front entry, we're going to be modifying the front entrance here at, in the lobby at City Hall. The primary point with that is a customer service issue. The bulletproof glass that is on the, the court clerk's office, the utility office right through these windows here, and on the city clerk's office, it is impossible to hear through it. A couple of years ago, we put in those awkward speaker systems. They don't work. If they do work, you can hear everybody's business all the way across the lobby and into some of the inner offices because they have to be turned up that loud. We are simply, as a customer service basis, going to be taking out that glass entirely. It really serves no purpose because the walls on either side of the bulletproof glass are just simply drywall. So if, if you really wanted to get entry or <coughs> do something really bad, all you gotta do is step to the side of the glass. The glass to the exterior of the utility uh, office across the hall here is just single pane glass. It's not bulletproof either. Mm. So the, the windows really don't serve the purpose that they were put in for, and they're a real detriment to customer service for our customers. The next fund is the transportation fund. The annual curb replacement program is on page 98, and the annual street preservation program on page 100, and the sidewalk program on 100, page 102. Some of you will remember three years ago, I proposed to the council that the amounts in all of these be boosted up and the curb replacement program also be receiving additional funds uh, within, within another fund here, get another 100,000 within stormwater because in addition to being a transportation issue, they're a stormwater conveyance measure. So between those, we are 
easily in any given year well over a million dollars where just four years ago we were dedicating 400 to 500,000 if we were lucky in those funds. We had funds languishing in each of those funds. So we're now getting good use out of these and getting a lot of projects done. Um, I'd, I'd ask Mr. Crass if necessary, but I might digress just a little bit here to for each of those programs give the commission just a quick overview of the, the targeted areas that each of those programs would have. Mr. Crass? For, for the uh, CURB program, we'll be focusing next year in the, <coughs> excuse me, Remington, uh, Ward Park, and Noel Creek and Stonegate areas. The street preservation projects next year, the majority of the work, or the, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, mill and overlay work that we'll be doing is going to be in the Foxhaven, Silver Lake, and Cantor Ridge areas generally. And then there's quite a bit of uh, crack sealing and other routine maintenance that'll be done throughout the city. Any questions on the specifics of any of those three? Mm -hmm. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Then there are, we, within transportation, we have uh, three street lights programs. As the commission is aware, last year we purchased our street lights, so the city owns all of our street lights. We, we are playing a little bit of catch up from when we, when we bought them. The uh, KCPNL, um, we think that we, that we were actually the last city that within the metro area that they were willing to do the street light program. Uh, I think that about halfway through ours, they were coming to the realization that leasing the street lights is a, is a very good cash cow for the, for the corporation. So they cut the program off with us. We did manage to get in under the wire on it, so we own them. But in the interim, there were some areas that we had already asked them to put in street lights. We made the purchase, those street lights weren't in yet. And since then, we've also found some targeted areas that, that really needed them when they were with KCPNL, so we're going to go ahead and do those now. The first two on there, on page 106 and 108, uh, Hubach Hill Road Streetlight. Mm -hmm. This is running east mm -hmm. from J Highway up to Florence Avenue on there. It is a very, very dark stretch of road out there, as Commissioner Crane can attest to. Um, the uh, there is one at J Highway, but it's a, it's. It's a weak one, to say the least. It's an, it's an older model. The Johnson Drive street light, this is just east of the Eagle Glen Elementary School, where Johnson Drive takes the jog on Fox Ridge Drive, and that is, that, there are no street lights in that four-point intersection there. So we're gonna be putting in a street light at that location as well. Mm -hmm. The Lucy Webb roundabout, uh, needs two additional lights to bring it up to standard going through that particular roundabout. So those are the three uh, targeted street light programs. I'm going to be getting to another one here in just a second. Any questions in the transportation fund with any of those projects? We're good. Thank you. Thanks. The capital improvement fund, as I had said earlier, we are paying for two areas of projects. One is a parks and recreation area project. Uh, the in the in la in the current year's CIP, we have fifteen thousand five hundred to bring internet to the concession stand at Recreation Park. We thought that was going to be a much simpler project than it is. Uh, we brought Comcast in, and um, th things changed rapidly relative to the complexity of the project. The, the wire to get wireless has to come all the way from Madison up to that particular concession stand in the middle of the park, and it has to be boosted so that there is internet throughout the park as well as the concession stand. That is the council's direction. So all of Recreation Park will be Wi-Fi capable just, by, just like TB Hanna Station is. But to get that, that wiring in, you will note in the Capital Improvement Fund, we still have the 15.5 that is currently in. 
We are adding to that concession stand internet connectivity with Wi-Fi at $18,000 down in the park sales tax fund. So in essence, the park board has said we will supplement the capital improvement fund money that was dedicated in the current year, in the next year, and the entire project is being moved into this year's CIP capital fund. Any questions on that one? Uh, what page was that on? Um, page 44, sir. Thank you. The next item in here is a transportation fund item. In addition to the three targeted street light projects on page 112, because we do now own the street lights, we are responsible for installing street lights in the areas where citizens make petition to have them. They have to meet certain criteria, but now we don't simply forward those onto KCPNL. We review those applications and petitions internally. And a perfect example of that is on North Franklin Street, uh, there are no street lights. When it first came in, uh, the entire subdivision received street lights. We have no idea what happened on North Franklin, but it's devoid of light in the evenings. We have had a number of petitions come uh, through us to have that done. We've turned those over to KCPNL over the years. The problem has been everybody on the street wants street lights, nobody wants the light in their front yard. So we think we've overcome that hurdle this year. Uh, we have an advocate on the street for us, so we're in the process of getting lights there. What this particular line item calls for is uh, a set aside or a bookmark, if you will, in each of these years in order to pay for the street light applications that come in. Any questions on that one? No. Terrific. <clears throat> Pushing on then, in the stormwater sales tax <clears throat> fund, again, as I had indicated earlier on page 86, in addition to the $400,000 out of the transportation fund, we fund $100,000 each year for curb replacement within the stormwater sales tax fund. Permeable pavers on crosswalks on page 88. This one is an exciting one for us. It is, as if you have seen it, on Huntsman at 58, at 58, we put in, instead of just asphalt at that medium, median entry into, into that subdivision, we actually put permeable pavers outlined in concrete uh, Mike, why don't you go ahead and talk to them about the advantages of doing that type of a project? What, what we have found there and along other intersections along 58 Highway is during the winter, we'll get a lot of, um, we'll get freeze thaw and we'll get a lot of water on the pavement that freezes overnight. The permeable pavers allow that to drain away. And so we've eliminated, an, uh, by doing this project, we've eliminated an icing condition at Huntsman at 58. And there are, we're targeting um, all of the remaining intersections on the south side of 58 this year for a similar treatment. With the exception of the major intersections. With the exception of the major intersections. So as Thank you, you can see on page 88, we're planning on them at Skyline, Sunset, Park, Woodson, High, Derby, and Mott. They, they're very attractive looking. Uh, then we will target the intersections on the north side in a future year. And then a little bit more of a challenge are the major intersections, the, the lit intersections. But it, it'll be, and you can see the picture there on page 89, it is, it'll be a signature look on a very busy highway and certainly um, adds to the, to the nature of us wanting to be a walk-friendly city. It, it, it tones it down, it gives it a, a, a more, a, a calmer feel than a sea of asphalt that's out there. And as Mr. Crass indicated, uh, it drains that water away. And especially at those intersections where you have the slight ridge, like at Huntsman coming out onto 58, it, it is a, a real safety issue that, that it helps with. Any questions on that particular project? Commissioner Armstrong. 
Sometimes uh, with perm rebuild concrete, you decrease the lifespan of it. Has that been addressed with this or assessed? We're, we're actually using pavers. And so the, the difference between a, a regular paver that you'll see um, maybe in your garden uh, or people do it with driveways is, is the gap. It's the same paver, same thickness. It's just that the gap between the pavers is larger. Okay, so it's not actually permeable through the paver itself. No. Thank you. Any other questions on that one? Oh, Commissioner Sarsfield. Uh, how does this hold up to salt? I mean, does it have to be replaced every five years because the salt will corrode the stone and get underneath it and lift it or? No, it's just, it's there's gravel in between the, in, in between the pavers. What, the only thing that uh, needs to be done occasionally and we can do it with our vector is you have to go and, and vacuum the, uh, vacuum the, the small particles out of the, the rock that's in between the pavers. Thank you. Yep. Good. All right. Okay. The, uh, the next project out of the stormwater sales tax fund is culvert at North Washington replacement. That particular culvert has failed or is failing and is in need of replacement. And uh, stormwater, the generic stormwater culvert replacement on page 93 within the, the stormwater section is a uh, culvert that we're going to have to put in between Rainbow Circle and Silver, Silver, Top, Silver, Lake, Drive. Silver Lake Drive, that's it. Uh, in the backyards running between those two streets uh, and is there any way we can bring that particular map up? Because that, that's a tough one to visualize where it's at. Uh, page 93. Page 93. <laughs> Terrific, thank you, sir. Um, through those backyards there, there's been a considerable amount of settling and it is due to a culvert failure that is occurring there. So that is a fairly long stretch that we're gonna have to go in and get that particular repair put into place. Any questions on that one? Yeah. Okay. okay. Within the park sales tax fund, a number of projects, a, a lot of these um, are in conjunction with, as the commission is aware, uh, a significant amount of the $10 million bond issue, over $7 million of that $10 million bond issue from uh, 20, from two years ago is going to major parks and recreation projects. The, the, the center view behind here is in part a parks project, uh, T.B. Hanna Station, Memorial Park, Hawk Ridge Park are all getting improvements associated with this. And so what you see here is over years of the five-year CIP, the, the additions that are going to go into some of those projects. To begin with, for many, many years, many, many people and many on the park board have been desirous of getting a dog park into the city. Uh, that is called for in the 2019-2020 uh, portion of the five-year CIP. Right now, there, is, there are a couple of different locations that are being targeted for this, um, that, but the park board has made no determination yet on where they're going to be putting it. The Memorial Park playground improvements for the 2018, 2019, and all of these of course are listed even though they're in future years. They may be in future years targeted but unfunded. What you see in here is what the park board has actually said, we are going to fund that in this year and the park sales tax fund is able to bear that with, with current estimates. The Memorial Park playground improvements call for uh, the the um, the playground that is just north of the west shelter of Memorial Park, right there by the ball fields. When you turn into the small parking lot there, though those are very old pieces of equipment. They it, it reminds me of the old J.C. Park where we had still had the uh, 
a twirling round thing for years and years and years that could throw you off. There are some of these pieces in there that are in that kind of shape and need to be replaced. The recreation park ball field lights, the two small fields on the south side of the major complex that are used for t-ball fields for the, for the younger children to play on, we'll, this proposes to light those in 2018-2019. The uh, concession stand internet connectivity we've spoken about, park maintenance facility building apron, uh, NPR, the city's risk management uh, company, recommended two improvements to the park maintenance facility. One was fencing, which is going in in this year and has already been approved by the council in the last, in the last two meetings. And the second was to put a concrete apron around that building. And so this is called for in a, in a future year in 2019, 2020 at a cost of $75,000 and it is funded. The Recreation Park Picnic Pavilion on page 50. The, um, the, the activity center that is going in will bring about the long-awaited destruction of the park house, which has been necessary, which is the reason we are building that activity center because the park house, as I explained to you all last year, is falling into the center of the earth and needs to be gone and gone quickly. So the pavilion will be, we think, a very, very nice addition to that overall area at Recreation Park. If you know the pavilion that is in Moon Valley, where it, and you can see a picture of it there, this one is actually very, very similar in scope and nature to the one in Moon Valley. It will have restrooms, the picnic area, water so it will be while the rack is an indoor facility this will be nice right next to it to contribute to the overall area the the park restroom enhancements at six thousand dollars this one i almost hesitated to to have into the cip at, at that particular cost uh, specifically what this calls for is uh, hand air dryers in all of the, the, the restrooms that we have in our parks. Um, uh, quite often, hand towel facilities uh, are empty. Uh, it's tough to keep up with them, especially at Recreation Park when you're having your typical fall Saturday and every single field is filled for the entire day. Um, they are not as sanitary it will, the, this will call for in one restroom some electrical upgrades, but the rest of them, this is simply a capital equipment purchase. The Recreation Park pedestrian bridge replacement. This is the bridge that connects Moon Valley Park with Recreation Park, and it is old and rickety and in need of replacement. It is actually some argue not ADA accessible because of the lip that's associated with it. Uh, there's quite a bit of bounce there, so this will uh, put in a new bridge there. The Recreation Park playground equipment. Um, we are fast learning. If, if you look in the out year for this particular item, it's $300,000. I have been amazed at how much playground equipment now costs. Uh, many of you know in my former life, I was a deputy superintendent of schools for one of the local school districts. Uh, it didn't cost this much then. The, Mr. Rulo indicates that the reason for these types of pricing is when you put in a playground now, you have to put in a playground surface and it can contribute to up to 50% of the overall cost of the playground. We were just having this discussion today. As most of you know, within the geo bond issue, TB Hanna Station, or TB Hanna Station, Hawk Ridge Park is going to have an, an all ADA playground. Mm -hmm. So every piece of equipment will have, while it will have regular pieces of equipment in there, 
each piece of equipment will be mirrored with an ADA accessible piece of equipment or possibly an enhancement to that. And the, the surfacing that has to be on there is actually 60% of the overall cost of that particular playground that's gonna go in there. So it, it is a great thing. It is a wonderful thing we're doing. It is a very expensive thing that we're doing. And so that's why to get to the replacement, which is much needed over at Recreation Park, you do not see that programmed in until 2020. And a lot of this is because the, the surfacing that is out there is beginning to deteriorate as well. So we needed to get that in. Any questions on that one? Thank you. Uh, next item that is on is the Recreation Park Pedestrian uh, Safety Enhancements for next year. Uh, a number of, of folks, uh, I'm sorry, on um, page 60 of the item I want to get back to that one because there was a significant amount of discussion the the if you've been there on a busy Saturday the the ability for pedestrians to get from one location in the park to another is limited in scope to either walking through grass which may be marshy at times or actually being out in the parking lot, number of children walking through a, an oddly shaped parking lot. So what we wanna do is provide a whole series or network of sidewalks to create total interconnectivity within there. We are also going to be separate and apart from this particular project. If you ever walk that, that park, next to the, um, south of the entrance to the park, next to the road where the trail actually becomes sidewalk, that particular portion of that trail after even a moderate rain is covered in two to three inches of water. It is covered in six to seven inches of water uh, after some of the rains that we have had and it's covered for a good 18 to 24 hours. Uh, when we were over there inspecting that particular location, I was watching people, and then it's marshy up to School Road in that location. So people who are, who are the power walkers in the morning and the evening are having to actually go out and walk along School Road and then come back into the entrance to regain the trail. So we are actually going to be in conjunction with, but not funded through the CIP with this particular project, going to be putting in a low rise bridge there for a walkway for those folks. We may keep the actual trail that exists or we may cover it. A lot of folks who are real adamant walkers or joggers, uh, sometimes they hesitate to use those low rise bridges that are in. They prefer to use the concrete that is there. So stay tuned on that one. The, but this will, th that will be done in conjunction with this project to provide total connectivity through the park for our walkers. The archery range is called for in, in the out year. The archery range will be uh, up at Hawk Ridge Park. It will be on the very westernmost part of the park. They started an archery program for youth last year. Uh, very rudimentary, uh, just the targets that were out there and making sure nobody was behind them. It was an incredibly successful program. A lot of children signed up for that. So we want to do a little bit to bolster up that program and give them some shelters and a different uh, target uh, type mechanism. The uh, Recreation Park Pavilion Playground, in addition to the main playground at Recreation Park, where that pavilion will be going in, uh, we'll be putting in a, a playground next to it. The Hawk Ridge Park Nature Playground, this is in conjunction with the, all in, the ADA all-inclusive playground that we're putting in now. This is one of those future steps. It is a nature playground that is also uh, completely inclusive and ADA accessible. The 
uh, Recreation Park Pond. Uh, again, if you've been to Recreation Park and took a look at the pond, you can actually uh, pretty much walk across it at this point because of all the silt that's in it. The, 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 in the current year, there is $10,000 slated to do the study that is going to be necessary on how we can get that, that pond fixed the way it needs to be. There's going to be, I am sure, dredging involved. There's going to be clean out. When you start talking about dredging ponds, as anybody who lives in Silver Lake can tell you, things start to get really complicated really fast. So you see the $10,000 for the study in, in this particular CIP, and then $150,000 for the 1819 year to get that pond back up where it, where it needs to be. Then the geo bond from the park sales tax. Uh, this is the last of the slated items. Everything else was budgeted in the current CIP for next year. The CIP includes uh, the Recreation Park Activity Center. And the, obviously the Activity Center has already been started uh, in, in an amount much higher than this 109. The 109 is actually necessary funding to be added to what is already there because of what we are seeing with all of these projects is they are increasing in cost significantly because construction costs are going up significantly. So whenever you do, whenever we sell a bond issue or do a bond issue, uh, we, uh, we've been lucky enough in the past to be able to sell the bonds at what is called a premium which means there is, you may have, be saying it's a $10 million issue, but you actually receive more in your project funds than what is out there. There is also interest gained on the funds that are languishing in the bank until you need to spend them. So this is 109,573 that needs to be dedicated to that project for the construction cost overages at this point in time, and we are using interest and bond premium that was earned on that to be dedicated to that particular project. The council has also, in addition to the premiums, recognized the, the overages that are associated with some of these projects, want to be sure that we not only keep the promises that we made with the bond issue, but in many, many cases exceed those. So the general fund in any given year has available fund balance at the end of a projected year. And the council in the previous year has dedicated uh, 300,000 in case we need that. There is a proposal to bolster that with some of these projects in next year's fund of 600,000 that came before the council last night. Uh, obviously that will, that will we, we don't believe we're going to be needing near those amount of funds, but it, it, is very, it is very good that we are dedicating funds that would normally be simply sitting there to one-time projects like this. Uh, when you talk with a Moody's or a Standard & Poor's for your credit rating, they love to see one-time plan drawdowns of your available fund balance. Um, so those funds are going to be available for that particular project. TB Hanna Station Park Improvements, this is actually the 520,000 that you see here is the very last of the dedicated geo bond money for park improvements that is, that is setting out there. So we'll be doing at least that much in improvements over at TB Hanna. Calls for a spray park, a synthetic ice rink, a railroad, the, all of this railroad themed, uh, a railroad themed uh, playground and playground equipment and converting the, the, the small house, as, as I think you all know, the city now owns or the parks department now uh, is in possession of that entire city block. And there was that small house that sits, the older house that a college student was running for many, many years which was many, many years of college, interestingly enough. Um, he was renting that house out. It was actually the first post office for the city of Raymore. And if you look at the front of that house facing south, you can actually see the entrance exit doors 
the, the entrance door has actually been covered up with a piece of plywood for many years. Mr. Crass has obtained through some manner the picture of the original post office. We are going to be converting that back into that facade and either turning it into a storage and pump house area for the spray park or restrooms or both. Any questions on those projects? The next item is in the sewer connection fee fund, uh, lift station emergency generators. There are a number of smaller lift stations uh, throughout the city that the city uh, is in control of that in addition obviously to the Owen Good lift station. Those are required to have emergency generators in case there is a power outage. And so this particular uh, CIP item calls for $94,000 to be dedicated to that. The Enterprise Capital Maintenance Fund is similar to the Building and Equipment Replacement Fund, but for our water and sewer infrastructure throughout the city. The first project in there on page uh, 74 is a sanitary sewer project, obviously. It is the inflow and infiltration program that we have each year. As I was saying to the council when I presented the CIP to them last month, this has been maybe one of our most successful silent programs in the city. Uh, inflow and infiltration, uh, as I'm sure most of you know, is when you get a lot of rainwater and you have uh, faulty sanitary sewer lines, the rainwater gets into the sanitary sewer lines and that often leads to sanitary sewer backups into homes. If we had had the same sort of rainfall, when we had moderate rainfall in 2006, 2007, we would have two to three dozen homes get sanitary sewer backups. During this historic rainfall of seven inches in three hours, we had six and only three of those were actual traditional sanitary sewer backups. This program has, and though obviously each one of those very costly in time and money to the city, normally we have to go in and, and help create options for citizens when those occur. The, the, it has been a very successful, very cost saving program for the city. We will continue this particular program for as long as it takes until we get completely clear of these and the only thing we have to worry about is surface water. The census meter reading system, this, this program it calls for the older meters within the city and the still, believe it or not, manual read meters in the city to slowly be replaced out year after year. Uh, this has been in place for since 2005. Uh, we have dedicated an amount of money each year out of the enterprise fund in the amount of $82,000. This is to supplement that program and try to get out from under the, the year to year because what we, what we are finding is we are now at the end of a 10 year useful life for some meters that we were already changing out. We still have manual read, read meters and uh, pretty archaic original version radio read meters. Eventually, we have got to get to a point in the city from a cost saving standpoint, from an information standpoint and customer service standpoint where all we have to do is push a button in the utility billing office and these get taken care of. The, the reads get taken care of, customers can see their usage hour by hour, and so we're dedicating an additional 150,000, as you can see, out of the capital maintenance fund to try to get ahead of that program. Owen Good Force Main condition analysis. Several years ago, we did a condition analysis of the Force Main from the Owen Good List Station to 58 Highway at Mazuma. This now calls for the same analysis to be done for the force main that runs north 
and then on into Independence. Obviously, we'll only take it to our city limits, but the the force main in that location is beginning to show deterioration as well. Uh, it is good that we get ahead of this program so that we can figure out those areas of the force main in priority order that we need to be changing. Uh, finally, the Owen Good overflow valve replacement. There is a very, very large valve, as you can see from the picture on page 80, uh, that controls uh, getting the sewage down at the Owen Good lift station from uh, a, a place uh, where we don't want it to be to a place where it should be and it would be that particular valve is starting to give out at this point so we want to make sure that we especially want to make sure that that valve stays in good condition so it's reached the end of its useful life time to replace it that concludes staff report on the cip mr chair yeah thank you mr fearborn uh, i think i can open the floor to public comments i did open the public hearing if anyone from the public would like to speak uh, regarding capital improvement plan please come forward to the podium and seeing no one close the public hearing on case 17027 uh, did any of the commissioners have questions for mr fearborn on any of the items Commissioner Anderson. M more of a comment on, I guess, sure. the beginning, the uh, distinguished budget uh, presentation award that the city uh, has received. Mm, yeah. So, and again, that goes to all the due diligence from you and your staff and the, uh, and the council as well. So I just wanted to point that out. Every time I see that, that means that we're proud of what we're doing and how we're doing it, and you're getting recognized for it. So congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. Other questions or comments? I have a comment. Yeah, Commissioner Pfizer. I just want to say I'm really excited to see the street light on the corner of Foxwood and um, Johnston. Every time we walk past there, we're like, why is it so dark here? We, we've been saying it for years. And so <laughs> when I was looking through this at home the other day, it's like, we're getting a street light. So we were really excited by that. So we appreciate this. Thank you. Uh, I always feel like uh, the, the the gentleman behind the counter in uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory when I get to present this to the council and the Planning and Zoning Commission because there's nothing but really neat things behind. <laughs> I agree. Uh, Commissioner Sarsfield. I'd like to <clears throat> I'd like to congratulate you on the the work that you're planning on doing with the uh, Memorial Park Playground. Uh, it seems like that with all the big stuff that's going on in Recreation Park and everywhere, the lake and this and this thing, that, that little park seems to get forgotten unless you're over by the school. But the little place there, like you said, the if you look at some of that equipment, the bolts are bent on it. It wiggles left and right three feet when it only should move two inches, <laughs> et cetera. And uh, there's a lot of kids that go there because I bring my granddaughter there a lot during the day. And I'd say the course of them there for about an hour, there's at least five to ten kids show up with their parents of course little toddlers because it is a nice quiet little playground but it's just too small and i think and i saw uh i can't think of his name right now of charge of the parks mr Mustang. nate okay and uh i says you know there's no street light there it's a little parking lot and uh there are no porta potties so you're coming there with a small child there's nothing there and he says well there's one way over by the school well, you're watching three toddlers and one's going this way and one's going that way and you've got to go 200 yards to a bathroom it's frustrating to a parent so he says drop off a little porta potty there you know at least during the summer months when the little kids will be out playing because to go all, all the way across the grass all the way up near the school is a little bit tiring for a mother who, especially if she has an infant who she's trying to push a stroller and hold two more on and they're going in three different directions so that was just a suggestion I gave, but thank you for doing something with that park already. It seems to get left behind a little bit because it's not the main focus like rec park with all the soccer fields and the baseball fields. 
And one of the things I know Mr. Mustine is very excited about with that park is this year, uh, we are, that park is going to get a dedicated arboretum placed mm -hmm. in it, kind of a quiet area, and the entire trail is going to be redone. We open those bit, the trail bids for the arboretum and the trail all the way around that particular park and came in considerably below budget, which was very, very nice. We actually opened those at two o'clock today, so the council will be seeing those in three weeks after we've done our due diligence on it. But yeah, that park is seeing a considerable number of improvements over the next few years. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other comments, questions from the commission? Mr. Zer, I imagine it would be appropriate for commission to uh, have a motion to recommend approval of the uh, staff. Yes, staff would request approval of the Planning and Zoning Commission and a right. recommendation on to the City Council, Mr. Chair. Right. Case 17027, 2018 through 2022, Capital Improvement Program. Sound right? Mr. Chair, make a motion. Uh, Commissioner Beckham. Anderson. All right. uh, make a motion to approve case 17027, 2018 through 2022 capital improvements program as presented and forward to the city council for approval. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Uh, okay, well, Commissioner Sarsfield, but I didn't hear him well, so we'll give him the second, okay? I forgive you. Uh, you forgive me, thank you. And thank you, Commissioner Wyski. So we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Anderson, second by Commissioner Sarsfield to approve the 2018 through 2022 Capital Improvement Program and forward case 17027 to City Council with recommendation of approval. That sound about right? Is there any further discussion on the motion? Yeah. All those in favor, raise a hand, please. Two, three, four. Seven, eight. Thank you, that's straining my math abilities. We have eight in favor, none opposed, no abstentions. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And that takes us to the City Council Report, Mr. Zur. Thank you, Chairman Faulkner. I'm happy to provide the City Council Report this evening. Uh, it will include comments from two different City Council meetings, one that occurred on August 28, 2017, the second one which occurred on uh, Monday, September 11, 2017. Uh, from the report, uh, a couple of items uh, with regard to the August 28th uh, agenda. Uh, first and foremost, the 25th Amendment to the Unified Development Code was approved by a vote of eight to zero. Uh, this had originally come to the Planning and Zoning Commission on July 18th, 2017, approved unanimously at that time and approved by the City Council uh, for the initial reading of the first reading on August 14th, 2017. Uh, as you would recall, this proposed 17 different modifications that were recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission as part of its annual code review. Um, so a number of different items there, uh, and that has now been approved through the 25th Amendment to the Unified Development Code. The next item that uh, the count Commission would have interest in, uh, under new business first readings, for the August 28th meeting was Heritage Hills, lots 158 through 175. This was the rezoning. Uh, there was a public hearing at that point as well. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission had the opportunity to review this on August 15th, 2017, and approved it by a vote of nine to zero. You'll recall this was a um, uh, reconsideration uh, for altering it from uh, R1 single family residential zoning to an R2 single and two family residential zoning. Uh, the applicant had come back in in order to provide us with a number of additional materials and samples of what they anticipate utilizing uh, or, or constructing at that location. So that was approved at the first reading by a vote of seven to one uh, following public hearing. And I think that concludes everything that would be of interest for the commission 
from the City Council meeting of August 28, 2017. Uh, there was a preliminary plat extension which would have been approved by you all uh, way back when but, uh, for the Brookside South. Uh, Doug Park, the Brookside Investment Inc. Uh, requested a one-year extension uh, from the preliminary plat and received the same. So that is the report from August 28, 2017. Obviously, uh, invite Mr. Cataret, Mr. Crass, and uh, Mayor Turnbow to provide any additional input on that as well. For the September 11th meeting, a uh, couple of items for you. Again, Heritage Hills, lots 158 through 175, the rezoning. Uh, that had its second reading, um, motion and second, and it was approved unanimously. So the alteration in the zoning has been completed with regard to Heritage Hills. Uh, there was also a name change with regard to some of the streets relating to the Heritage Hills subdivision uh, during the course of that meeting. Um, and I believe that will cover everything that the Planning and Zoning Commission had direct hands on during the time of, uh, with regard to any of the items on the agenda for September 11th or August 28th. I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Zer. Uh, Mr. Cataret and Mr. Grass and Mr. Kress, if you would, uh, would like to hear the staff report. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, just a couple of uh, announcements regarding upcoming meetings let the uh, commission know the uh, next meeting of city council on september 25th they'll be having uh public hearings uh four public hearings uh on the uh sidewalk and undeveloped lot program that we have this is the fourth year that we've had this program this year uh in january 1st we started with 10 lots that met the requirements to have sidewalk installed sidewalks been installed or is in the process on six of those lots but we're left with four lots scattered in our city that meet the threshold requirements so we're requesting council to hold a public hearing and and uh, determine if the city should install the sidewalk on those lots and assess the cost for installation back as a special assessment of the property in about uh, two to three weeks, we'll be installing sidewalk on lots that we held public hearings on last year. And I believe there's a total of six segments uh, this fall that we'll be installing. Uh, but we've been very successful in recouping any costs the taxpayers spend on this program, and it's provided great connectivity in the areas where we've installed sidewalk. So it's a good program that we'll uh, uh, be continuing uh, into next year as well. Now the next meeting of the Planning Commission uh, would be October 3rd, so in a couple of weeks. What we'll uh, be presenting is a discussion item, bringing back to you the discussion items we had with the 25th Amendment, where we dealt with the uh, solar energy systems, we dealt with animals on residential lots and the accessory dwelling units. Those three topics that we deferred with the 25th Amendment will be bringing back to you for discussion on how to proceed. And so that'll be October 3rd. Uh, no other applications currently uh, uh, in process. So we'll keep you apprised of, of that regarding your October 17th meeting. We'll know more on October 3rd uh, if we'll have any items for that meeting. Uh, so that concludes my comments. Uh, Mr. Grass, if you had any comments this evening. Sure, uh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, um, we are in the, Heart of our construction season, the curb replacement program is moving along, currently working in the uh, Remington area. The contractor has completed all of the pavement removal that is associated with our street preservation program this year. Uh, the rains have hindered work a little bit, but they anticipate doing some patching up on Creekmore Drive. Uh, this week and um, should be completing all of the new asphalt surfacing with um, within the next couple of weeks which if weather permits and timing works out will allow them to roll over and start work on 155th Street between Kentucky Road and Madison Street we have uh, council will be considering a second reading of that contract Monday night and we'll be awarding it to Superior Bowl and the same contractor that is doing the current uh, street preservation program that completes my staff report okay thank you mr. Crass uh, mr. chair could I, Mike could I get you to you did such a great job with the council the other night I'm explaining the three phases of 155th Street could you do it for this group too sure that was pretty interesting I'm glad you didn't ask me to go over my work plan for 155th I don't have my script so 
<laughs> the project's actually in three, three, three phases. Uh, the first, first phase we're working on is uh, the mill and overlay and some significant patching and culvert replacement for uh, the road between Kentucky and Madison Street. And then uh, later, later this winter, we'll be working on the initial phases of the bridge replacement and then re uh, hopefully wrapping that up early in spring. Uh, we will then start design of the remaining portion of 155th Street between Madison and Kurzweil. We've got to do some investigation regarding um, right-of-way that, that is there. We, we hope to be able to widen that road a little bit. I don't know if you've ever driven that road when the Bobcats with the extended mirrors are coming at you. It's a bit of a bit of a trick. So uh, we hope to be able to widen that road a little bit to get, get a, a better defined two-lane road. That right now is scheduled for uh, summer of 2018. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Uh, ta -ta -ta. I'll open the floor for public comment one more time. And seeing no one, we'll move on to commission member comment. And I've completely forgotten how I picked this last time, but sure. Commissioner Anderson, yeah, thank since, you. Since I was late, fashionably late here. <laughs> I, I, I did notice that there is a new city logo. Oh, right. So I don't know if it's kind of, you know, underneath the wire there. So is, is there going to be a formal announcement or you know, come home to more? And Mr. Hey, Cato, yes, you'll start seeing that on your agenda. You still have the old logo on your agenda, uh, but your next agenda will show the new logo, the new tagline, come home to more. A, a big program has been, uh, uh, released regarding the the new city logo uh, you'll see that on all all city documents all city publications from here on out yeah great uh, we'll just keep on moving commissioner armstrong <laughs> sorry caught you unaware <laughs> uh, no comment except to that i hope we keep um, the gulf in our thoughts as as they get Hit again by storms. Yeah, that's true. We've been very lucky here. Uh, Commissioner Meiske? I have no comment. All right, I'll turn the other way then. And uh, Vice Chair Pfizer. I just want to remind everybody that the festival in the park is this weekend and the parade is Saturday morning. It's always a lot of fun to see. Um, and I'm looking forward to some funnel cakes. <laughs> And that's about it. Thank you. That was a pretty good ad. Does that start Saturday or Friday? It starts Thursday. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Secretary Crane. No comment. Commissioner Sarsfield. No comment. Mayor Turnbow. Yeah, uh, just to follow on to what Commissioner Pfizer said, that we, um, the that actually we have the uh, opening ceremony at 6.30 p.m. with the raising of the flag at Memorial Park on, at, as I said, at 6.30 on Thursday. I think I said 6.30 on Thursday. And then uh, the parade Saturday morning and concludes Saturday evening, but hope to see you all there. Uh, they've got a lot of great things planned for that uh, three-day festival. And um, just my other thing was uh, thank Jim, uh, Mr. Fearborn, for a great presentation on the CIP. It's the second time I've heard it, but it was still good. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it just uh, it, the whole budget process is seems to be coming uh, more and more formalized. That the process has made it a lot easier for us elected officials, and it, uh, it's a testament to uh, Mr. Fearborn and his staff and their preparation of the budget. And and uh, boy, being mayor's kind of fun uh, <laughs> when you you've got. Uh, great people to work with. That's all I have, thank you. I'm glad to hear, and I actually, I'll, I'll second the, uh, your comment about great people to work with. Uh, thank you to staff, Mr. Grass, Mr. Cataret, Mr. Zur, it's good to see you again. Mr. Crass, I'm sure this is double duty since we've lost Mr. Eanes, but uh, we do appreciate your participation and support as well. And uh, unless anyone has any other comments, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting. I think that was Mayor Turnbow. I'll second. And Commissioner Meiske got you in that time. 
All those in favor, raise a hand, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's eight in favor, none opposed, no abstentions, and we are adjourned. Thank you all.